The Barbican Centre in Drogheda played host to a charity snooker exhibition featuring Jimmy Whirlwind White, Trickshot Maestro John Virgo and former world champion Ken Doherty. The Dundalk Democrats sat down with the trio before the event. First of all, John Hendry was a friend of mine. He uh, asked me, came to watch an exhibition with uh, Jimmy and myself and John Virgo. I thought it would be a good idea to bring it up here and use it as a fundraiser for uh, the Dreadnoughts, the local GAA club. So uh, that's how we got involved. We've been doing exhibitions for a long time together. I don't think we've been up in Drogheda. Jimmy and I did one in Drogheda uh, and Dundalk and up in Cavan before. Uh, but it's the first time I think the three of us have, have done it and a few together up this way. Uh, but they're great fun and we really enjoy, you know, uh, playing and, and doing nights together. They're, they're good fun. Like, you know. I've done a couple of shows in Drogheda before. I was here in the early 80s with our photographer. He, he played people we both very young. <laughs> um, so I've been here a few times. This sort of format that we play, um, John comes on does trick shots with the audience and does impersonations and he commentates on me and Ken. So we have a serious match, plus we play some amateurs. I think that's one of the things about snooker, it is a sport, one of the few sports that you can take into a theatre atmosphere yeah. and, and, and make it into a show, you know, rather than people watching people running around, breakneck speeds and all that. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, enjoyment there and a very high skill, skill level as Ken proved last night by making a maximum break. You keep mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> and you keep forgetting to mention it. Because it was up there. Yeah. In my day, uh, in Salford, they, they had a snooker club, uh, which were few and far between in the uh, early 60s. And uh, that's how I got involved, you know. Uh, I presume the younger elements. Uh, that they grew up watching on TV, but uh, I, I was lucky there was a snooker club in my area and uh, fell in love with the game. Basically the same, you know, just uh, a local snooker club, got fascinated by the game and um, started playing at a very young age, about 11. It's not a team game, it's down to the individual, you know, and uh, I, I think that's one of the weaknesses of the game, really, in participation. It's so difficult to play, you know, that's why people turn to pools and things like that because it's a lot easier to pop ball. No, than a, this is a big pool town, isn't it? Yeah. You'd be in big trouble for that, Jay. Well, yeah. I don't care. You try and play sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when you play pool in your local pub or club, then you go on to the snooker table. It's like twice the size and pockets are a lot tighter and the balls are completely different. Uh, it starts the men's and the boys' table, that's for sure. I went in the club today um, called Potter's. It's owned by a boy who's only 20. Uh, his father has a table in the house. And, uh, they've got lots of young people playing all weekend, and uh, mainly at night time, but there's a big interest in the club. So uh, that's a good start. All the tables are recovered and looked after. So good conditions. You know, and there's a few pool tables as well. So there's pool players and snooker players in there. Yeah, I think there's a lot of talk about the demise of snooker, but. On a worldwide basis, I mean, the interests are just growing and growing. I think we were just so used to it to those heady years, you know, in the, uh, yeah. the 80s and what have you. And maybe the prize money has just dropped off a bit, and that is the life and blood of every sport now. What can you get if you, if you become at the top of your profession? Can you become a millionaire? And snooker needs to keep up there with the prize money to encourage people to play it. If they're just starting out, and, um, it's like golf, you know, if you go and play golf without know, getting some lessons, you're going to play bad all your life, you know, so you need to get your cue action sorted. And, um, but my advice would be, you know, just try and enjoy it and um, play for a while, see if you start to make centuries after two or three years. And, uh, no playing local leagues, but play it for fun at first. Yeah, you 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 you've got to really love the game. Yeah, you got you got and you got to play as, in as many competitions as possible. Coaching and the basic principles are very important. You know? uh, but certainly coaching uh, and playing against playing a competition, playing against players who are better than you, because you'll always learn more playing against other players. And, and sort of the competition, particularly when the pressure is on. And then losing, you actually learn more from your defeats than you did from winning because you you learn from your mistakes. Uh, and that's very important to play as many competitions as you can.
But you need to enjoy it, Jimmy said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't, then do something else. Yeah. It's hard enough yeah. as it is. It's never real job. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. 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 Next year we're going to do a tour of Ireland because these have been so popular, the, th the three man format, that uh, there's been a big demand for it. So we'll yeah. probably be back here next year. We're uh, enjoying the playing in front of these crowds the last couple of nights and uh, we hope tonight it's going to be another good night. And if people can't make it tonight, we hope we'll see them in the future in the new year.